Welcome back to the Horse Racing Show. I'm talking with one of the great trainers, Hall of Famer Richard Mandela, who is back in the Derby for the first time in 15 years. He probably will have the favorite in Omaha Beach. Well, welcome back. It's nice to be here. What's it like being back here for the Derby? I know you've been back here for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, it's nice. You know, when I ran my first couple of, bre of Derby horses, they warned me, if you don't do better than this, you're going to pay for it. And the last time I came, they said, you got 15 years and don't come back till you get a good one. And you do. So I brought a good one. See, that's it. Yeah. Now, this, you're known, obviously, for, you know, Beholder and your grass horses and some of the great horses you've trained. Uh, I think people that are watching this are mostly horse racing fans. But, Richard, we have a lot of people that are kind of casual fans. And, and most people always think Derby. It's all about the Derby. And we know in horse racing, it's a lot about other things, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess so people still ask you about the Derby. They ask me, but I don't have any good answers. I haven't been very successful at it. But, uh, but racing's been good to me, as you say. But uh, I just think I needed to grow up, and I think I'm there. I liked your line, you miss derby class. What was that? Yeah, Billy and Mott and I were out having a few beers and ditched derby class at school. We've paid for it all our life. <laughs> How about that? You're in here, Mott's in here. You know, people are going to be asking you in the next week, uh, Boy, two of the greatest trainers, you've got, you haven't won the Derby. How many times are you going to hear that one? Yeah, we've heard it before. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Omaha Beach? When did you start thinking, yeah, this actually is a, a Derby contender? When did that kind of hit you with it? Well, you know, when Mr. Porter and, and uh, Larry Jones picked him out at Keeneland and then asked me to go look at him, you looked at his pedigree, it kind of said to you, if he likes dirt, he could be that kind just on paper and physically looking at him. Uh, but, you know, we all go into yearling season that way. They're all derby horses. Yeah. Uh, but as he trained, he trained with a lot of ability. Um, wasn't a show off, but if you asked him to do something, he'd respond. And then when I ran him the first few times on the turf, uh, just thought that was a good way to get him started. He ran well, but he didn't. He didn't blow the doors off, and I, I kind of expected that, and he didn't do it. Um, he's a very kind-hearted, sweet horse, and I think it took him a couple races to make a man out of him. But he's the man now. Oh, he's been impressive. Now, is this the deal, Larry Jones, when he sent him to you, he was thinking grass horse to start with? Well, possibly everybody, grass everybody horse. Everybody had it in their mind work. that he'd be a war front, that yeah. that might be where he wants to go, but, but uh, war front's just good at anything. Winning's winning, isn't it? That's right. You go out there and you beat two of Baffert's horses uh, in, in the Rebel and, and then come back in the Arkansas Derby, so you game winner and improbable, you knock off, and then suddenly you're a star again. It's a fickle business, isn't it? They love you now. Yeah. Well, Baffert, you see, he's kind of like some of those big prize fighters. They get rich and famous and get a little bit lazy, and then they drop their hands a little bit. Watch out. <laughs> You got him with the right and the left. <laughs> there you go. We had him on uh, last week on uh, the show, and uh, he said that his barn's next year's there at Santa Anita, and that you were, in his words, giddy. And I said, I've never seen Richard Mandela giddy. Well, last year, my wife and I were walking through his barn over to run a horse in the fifth race, and earlier that day, he'd run um, Triple Crown winner. What's his name? Oh, uh, Justify. I, I Just, saw him run. Yeah. Justify. Yeah, he's pretty good horse. Pretty good Bob, horse. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, he had won. Well, he's won so many triple crowns. He had won now. his maiden race two hours before, and Bob had him back out. He went back to the barn a couple hours later, and he had him out on the walking ring, and Bob was just looking at him, and you could see drool coming out of his mouth. And he said, Dick, look look at this horse as, as we went by, and he told me how he'd won his maiden race. And so g the great ones really make you get excited. Well, this specialty is, is Todd Pletcher's, as Wayne Lucas was. It's mostly focused on the three-year-olds and trying for this Triple Crown. You've mostly focused, I guess, would be fair to say, grass horses. Horses have been imported. Uh, obviously, some, some mares have done really well. Again, we go back to Beholder. Uh, you know, yeah, everybody kind of has a specialty, don't they? Or, or is that fair to say it's a specialty? You could train anyone, as we're seeing here with Omaha Beach. Well, I have focused on the Derby all my life, but I maybe should have got glasses. <laughs> so you're telling me, all those great horses you've had, this is what you've really wanted to do is be here at Churchill <laughs> Downs it. with maybe the favorite? This is it. Yeah, I've been waiting all my life. You've been holding back. Yeah, yeah, saving it. 
You know the old line. I talked about it earlier. Charlie Whittingham says he's on a plane, and he told I think he told all of us that before Ferdinand won. <laughs> and the guy next to him says, uh, what do you do? He says, I'm a horse trainer. He said, you ever won the Kentucky Derby? He said, no. He said, you're no horse trainer. <laughs> you heard that one? That's probably it. Yeah. That was Charlie's yeah. line forever. Yeah. Does that... Uh, I guess in the in the business, you know, people do focus on that in the triple crown races. They get the most attention. Do you really think about that? Does that ever ever bug you a little bit? Or any any good trainer that wins, as we know, there's a lot of different. That's why you have gender races and turf races and and dirt races. It's not all about the three year olds. They just get the attention. Yeah, but racing can thank Matt Wynn for making the Derby what it was years ago. He worked at it. He pushed it and he made it what it is. And it takes a long following to ever develop anything like this. You can't just snap your fingers and make it happen. The Breeders' Cup's working at it and getting there, but, and, it, and they are as horsemen. We know those are great races. Yeah. But the Derby has that magic, but we owe it to Matt Wynn. Yeah, that's true. He brought in all the big sports riders from New York, wined and dined them, and yeah. life worked out pretty good. I don't know if there's ever been a better marketing in horse racing than the Kentucky Derby's been marketed. I'd say so. I mean, I don't know. Let me, let me ask you, I don't want to dwell on the Santa Anita situation, but you were out there, you had your horses out there. What was it like just going through all that? And I'm sure people asking you about it all the time. What's going on with Santa Anita? Yeah, well, it's back in probably the best shape it's ever been, you know, because of the sc scrutiny and the, and the troubles that we had. They've taken that track up, put it back down several times, um, and it couldn't be better right now. What some people maybe don't realize is in California, we have to keep more silt and clay in our track mm -hmm. because it's a desert. And if you just put sand like they do the tracks back in the east, they'd just be a dust bowl. So right. you, you, you couldn't keep enough water on them. So with that, when you do get those heavy rains, they don't dry out as fast. It's not as easy to work. And there's days we maybe shouldn't have raced, maybe days we shouldn't have trained. So I think I think it was a combination of a lot of mistakes, just kind of from one end of the game to the other, and kind of the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, everybody has learned a good lesson from it, and maybe the game will be better for it. That's a great explanation, by the way. Because okay. I think that's what horse racing really needs is an explanation about it all. Yeah. Just to, let's clear it up and move on and not keep apologizing and not look for other things that confuse the, mm -hmm. the masses out there, whips yeah. and drug use and all that, drug yeah. medication, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, even Bob Baffert pointed out last week, we always talk about Baffert. He always keeps coming up, doesn't he? Oh, I can't get rid of him. Yeah, he's, I've tried for years. <laughs> I know. And he's right beside you. How'd that happen? Yeah. yeah. Then i got to look at him every day. Every day? Is he giving you any pointers? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's actually given me derby lessons for the last few years. But about three weeks ago, maybe it was a month ago when I won the Rebel, all of a sudden he started throwing me some curveballs. Uh huh. Yeah, he thought I was getting serious now, so he wasn't going to help. So I quit him and I went off on my own. Well, like you said, Lucas is helping me now. <laughs> Wayne Lucas has become the coach again. Yeah. What is the best advice for handling this derby? Do you have any, you know, you've been here before, it has been a while. But I mean, is with all the media attention, and we know next week it's going to be nuts. There's going to be people every day flocking around your barn, and you'll probably be the favorite and all that. Can't take it too serious. You got to just roll with the punches, and keep a little sense of humor. Uh, as far as training the horse, it, it is just another race to train for, mm -hmm. so you don't want to get too creative. Yeah, is what I'm is what I'm thinking that I've learned in all these years learned it well. I mean, you don't just get to the Hall of Fame. We'll see what happens. Bob Baffert, I was getting back to the Santa Anita thing. He pointed out last week when we were talking to him, he said, hey, look, for all the talk and everything, uh, we're going to have probably four of the top five horses are going to be based in Santa Anita. You and his three, and that's probably about right. Would you say it's probably his three and you will probably be in the top at least six coming into this? I'd say California can be pretty proud. Yeah. And through the years, we we've held up pretty well. It's been California's race through the years, in the last several years, you know? The Baffert's two, and uh, Doug O'Neill, a couple of them come in and win. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty good to be coming from the yeah. West Coast. Just trying to get those guys to share a little bit. They're selfish, very selfish. It's a cruel business, isn't it? Yeah, humbling. <laughs> it's humbling, isn't it? <laughs> One of my favorite moments with you, the dead heat at Santa Anita. 
in the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. And I'm standing with you, you won't remember. I'm standing with you and they're in my ear, you know, saying, hey, you got anybody to talk to? I said, Richard Mandela's here. And I remember I looked at you and we kept watching the big screen. And it, every time it looked pretty much like a dead heat. And I said, you got time to talk? He said, got nothing else to do. I'm just watching to see <laughs> Joe Harwin this, what happened, who won this thing? <laughs> that seemed like an hour and a half. It was a long time, wasn't it? That was a pretty good day for you, I believe. But it was a good day. When you had five winners that day. Four. Four winners. Yeah. That's like a fish story. It gets bigger all the time. By the time this interview ends, you might have won six races. <laughs> That's right. Four didn't suck. <laughs> it wasn't a bad day, yeah, was it? It was pretty good. Yeah. What does it mean to win a derby? I know it sounds such a cliched thing to ask, but with all your accomplishments, and you know, we talked about Breeders' Cup, Hall of Fame, and all, to come here and win a derby, what would that mean to you? It would be a, a, a great thing and something always been in the back of your mind and you dream about. When I was younger, it was probably, I would say, more frustrating to me than it is now. Uh, getting a little older, and I'm, I'm very happy with what I've done, and uh, I just hope I can add this to it. So maybe everything works out for a reason. Do you ever buy into that? You know, the right time in your life, maybe the right horse in your life coming in? Yeah, maybe it'll give me a few more years. I threw this handicapping thing out. Of course, a couple of my really good handicapping friends thought it was funny. They said, you're nuts. I said, OK, let's look at it this way. I look at great trainers, never won the Derby, maybe had gaps between coming in. I think of Charlie Whittingham, Jack Van Berg, Mac Miller. Alan just, Jerkins. Yeah, you know, that just came in and said, hey, we're here. Let's see what happens. You know, Carl Nafsker, when he popped in with Unbridled, wasn't like he came to the Derby every year. And then we've seen a lot of younger guys, you know, John Service. And, Michael Matz is not known as a derby trainer, or, nor Graham Motion. So I'm building up to all this, see. When I see you here after 15 years, I figure you really feel strongly about this horse. Well, my sentence is up. I actually had 16, but I got off to 15 with good behavior. <laughs> so you're saying if you don't win this thing, I won't talk to you again for 15 years here before the derby? They might give me 20 after this <laughs> one. I did this. <laughs> What's it going to be like, you think, when you walk over and you see 165,000 or so there and you do the walkover? I mean, even veteran guys, you know, even Lucas and Baffert's that's walked over have said, you know, there's still something about that moment when you see that and it really hits that this is real. It is exciting, yeah. It is exciting. I remember years ago I brought a horse here for Burt Backrack and he asked me, he said, Dick, can I, can I make the walk with you? I said, yeah, sure. So we started to walk around that corner there and people started yelling, back a rack, back a rack. So I stopped and I said, Bert, you gotta go back about a hundred yards. They're scaring my horse. So I made him walk a hundred yards back. <laughs> Soul of the matter? Soul of the matter. Soul yeah. of the matter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember when he was here for that. Yeah. And you know, and people do, and they'll be cheering you. They'll be, you know, no, you may back have rack to, was the scene. I know, but this time around, they'll be cheering you. They'll yeah. be hollering Mandela. You'll, you'll have to move away from your own horse. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I better walk there. They, they ain't gonna be. They'll be yelling for Omaha Beach. Is he? Is he skittish horse? You, you feel comfortable uh, about? He's really. He, he's one of the kindest, coolest horses I've ever had around, to be around. So you, I don't see any problem. Yeah. And 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 everybody will ask you every possible scenario, won't they? Yeah. What's gonna happen? So what is the we'll best? We'll make up something. We'll make up this. What's the best possible scenario? If if he runs the perfect race to win this mile and a quarter test, what would it be for him? Get to the wire first. It's kind of like if you score the Keep most simple. Score the most points in basketball, you'll generally win. <laughs> kind of, there you go. See? We just broke it down to a science. Hall of Famer Richard Mandela here on the Horse Racing Show with this exclusive tip. Get to the wire first, you win the roses. There you go. Is it that simple? It's as simple as that. What about this Mike Smith guy? What was that like? Uh, waiting to see who he was going to ride and then comes aboard. Well, I'm glad he's coming. He's learning. He's getting better all the time. I, he, they tell me he's in the Hall of Fame, too. Yeah. Wow, how about that? Probably three times as old as he is. Yeah, he's, he's, he's coming in, and uh, we've had Mike on the show. He's in incredible shape, and uh, <laughs> uh, I know uh, that was a big story, Roadster or Omaha Beach. Did you have a feeling it was going to be Omaha Beach? Because obviously he'd seen, your, you know, he'd seen your horse up close and personal. He knew what he could do. Mm -hmm. I just waited and hoped he went with me, and it turned out fine. So that's all you can do. How much does a jockey mean in a race, especially like this, going to be a crowded field? 
Uh, I'm sure very important in a race like this. You know, very seldom do you get 20 horses together once a year. Uh, he's got the experience, so somebody asked me, what are you going to tell him? I said, I'm going to tell him nothing. I'm going to ask him what we should do. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. What, what pearls of wisdom will be, uh, yeah. will be dispensed yeah. when they're over there in that Not a minor worth anything. <laughs> Just get to the wire first? Yeah, I, I give him that instruction. There you go. You like this time of day? Just, just us hanging out right now. This is it. Nobody's gonna be coming around. To Doesn't get any better than this. I know it'll be. How much is it gonna be next week when you have like 50 people around you with cameras every day? I might get the guitar out and play a little music for them. What's your favorite song? In case Mama, you... don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> Willie Nelson. I never would have guessed that. <laughs> I thought you were gonna tell me a back rack classic like you know San Amber, Jose yeah. or something. All of Burt's. You can't miss with Burt's. It's amazing. When you go to one of his concerts, one after another after another, music I grew up on, just, yeah. just amazing. Did he like hum a song or two when you're walking over that day or when you're in the paddock with Solo Man? I was, I was always humming and kind of singing were. a little bit when he was, you know, just acting kind of innocent, just hoping he'd try to, dis I would, hoping he would discover me. <laughs> you and Dion Warwick, yeah, that'd been a classic duet, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah, we could have got together. <laughs> it would have worked out fine. I could have sung the high parts. <laughs> <laughs> think you'll do another interview like this, Derby Week? This is about, this is about the best one we're going to do, I think. I think this is fun. Yeah. We're going to get nervous after this. Yeah, you don't get, do you ever get nervous? Oh, I Real have moments. moments. I have moments. Because you're the duck, you know, under the water, paddling away on top, smooth as silk. Never thought of it like that. Well, I just well, thought of okay, it. I just, yeah. It just came to mind when you said you get nervous because I've yeah. been around you before big races, Breeders' Cup races, and you've always been accommodating and uh, pretty much like you are right now. I'm a good actor. Well, you're in Hollywood or close enough to it. <laughs> Look at this. Richard Mandela, almost discovered by Burt Backrack, maybe an acting career still ahead. He may play his guitar. Play it on the walkover. You realize what great TV that'd be? Yeah. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> Richard, all the best to you. All right, see you later. Thanks so much. Okay. Hall of Famer Richard Mandela, okay. who will likely have the Derby favorite next week in Omaha Beach. Stay with us. More of the Horse Racing Show coming up.